what we really realized when the movie started playing to real audience is, is moms need a break. Moms are overworked and overscheduled, and yes, part of it is pressure that society puts on them, and part of it, frankly, is pressure they put on themselves because everybody wants to be a great mom. And people saw the movie and really just felt a sense of release. You know, maybe the drinking helped, but they saw the movie and they just felt like it was okay that they'd forgotten to pack the lunch. It was, for, it was okay. Whatever they had done wrong was okay because their intention was good, and at their heart, they're really good moms. Enjoy more. Stress less. Because, you know, the stress doesn't really help, I, I think is a realization that some people came to after the first movie, you know, that they can really look at it through the characters that they get to see in the film and understand that it isn't helping them, it isn't helping their kids, it isn't helping their relationship with their husbands, it actually isn't helping anybody. So if you could enjoy more and stress less, then you would actually be a better mom, which is what you wanted in the first place. Once the three came together, you know, Mila and Kristen were already friends and Catherine was new to that group. It's always a little bit of chemistry anytime you're casting and putting a group together like that. I think we lucked out with magic between the three of them. They're all moms of little kids. They're all young moms themselves and they loved each other. And I think that came through on screen, how really supportive they are and how genuine that friendship is. Scott and John are incredibly insightful, very attentive, and I know this because I know both of their wives very well. They're both married to incredible women, and uh, it seems from the outside like they're both very good husbands. Part of what it seems like makes a good husband is being very good at watching and listening. And as writers, I think that because they watch and listen, they're amazing wives in their own families and they both have young kids, I think that they get to soak up so much valuable information about what makes women tick and how women really feel and what women really want, and I think that comes through in the work. Amy, as we saw in the first movie, is a little bit of a perfectionist herself, so you're not surprised to find out that her mom is the uber-perfectionist, right? We all get it from somewhere. And so I think for her, when her mom comes to town and she has this experience of really being pushed on harder than she has ever been pushed, it gives her the opportunity to reflect on her own behavior and understand how it affects her own children and evolve into a better mother because of it. Kiki, as we saw in the first movie, was you know desperate for a best friend, desperate for any friend, was a little clingy in her own way. We see that her mom clearly has taught her to be this way, but we get to understand why her mom is this way. And I think that's part of where the emotion comes into the piece, because anybody that's ever had a clingy mom or you know, anybody that's ever had this experience when you're on your phone, with your, when you're on the phone with your mom and you're saying, I gotta go, and she keeps talking, and you're saying, no, I have to hang up, and she keeps talking, and you're like, if my house was on fire, I couldn't get my mother off the phone, because when you understand in her relationship, you know, in the movie, she's lost her husband, she's in a place where, you know, she feels very sad about that, and her daughter, Kiki, reminds her so much of her husband that it's hard not to want to be around her all the time. So I think when you understand what's at the core of why she behaves that way, that you can have compassion for it, and it's more interesting then. Who was the mom that crafted this experience that made Carla all the wonderful things that she is, right? You will get to see that in the lovely Susan Sarandon. You know, the, the idea for some people that having a mom that you're slightly disconnected with, that you're distant with, that you don't have a close relationship with, again, back to my original point about, you know, intention and good mothering and wanting to be close to your family, I think that what we get to see in them is she really does want to have a closer relationship with her mother, and that's never been available to her. And the fact that in the course of the movie that 
presents as a possibility for them is so emotional and moving because many people are in that situation with their own mother or their own father or other relatives where, you know, life is hard and stuff happens and you fall out with people, people move away, you don't have those close relationships you want. And it's part of the holidays. It's not just about the cards and the trimmings and the packages and everything else. It is about who you choose to spend time with, right? Whoever is most important with you you're probably gonna to plan to be with for the holidays. And so in this case, they haven't been two people who have been planning to be together and this presents a real opportunity for their relationship.